Now that we know how to deal with connected masses or systems of masses, we can also solve pulley problems. The same general ideas can be used, as we'll see. For example, two masses, 100 kilograms and 50 kilograms, are at each end of a rope that is hung over a frictionless pulley. Determine the tension in the rope. Again, we recognize that there are three possible free body diagrams here. The first one, the 100 kilogram mass. We have FG pointing down, the force of gravity, and T, the force of tension from the rope, pulling up. Again, we know that the rope is pulling up in that, well, if we cut the rope, the mass would definitely fall more quickly. Now, before we get to our equation, let's determine our positive direction. Again, it's up to you to choose the positive direction, but to keep things simple, it's always nice to make the positive direction in the direction of motion. Since it'll move in the direction of the heavier mass to the left, we will consider down as the positive for this equation. Therefore, we'll have F net equals M1A, and F net is FG1, the force of gravity, pulling it down, and minus T, the tension in the rope, pulling it back up, and that equals M1A. And we know the mass M and can determine the force of gravity, that is MG, but we still have two unknowns, T and A. Next, we can consider the 50 kilogram mass. So in this one, we have, again, FG pulling down, the force of gravity, and T, the tension force from the rope pulling up, the force from the rope is equal and opposite to the force acting on mass 1. So calling them both T is going to be helpful. Now, before we get to our equation, let's again determine the positive direction for this one. Now in this case, positive would be up. Again, we're looking for the direction of the expected motion. It may seem weird, but it's going to be the same direction, in fact, as we consider how the positive in the other free body diagram is down and the rope is being pulled over a pulley. Even though one is up and the other is down, they're both consistent. The system will drop on the left side and raise on the right side. And our equation would be F net equals M2A. And in this case, from the positive direction, we have T pulling it up, and the FG2 pulling it back down, and that's equal to our M2A. Again, we know the mass M and can determine the FG2, that is MG, but we still have two unknowns, the tension and the acceleration. Our third free body diagram will be the entire system. But before we start, here's a little trick that'll make things easier for you for these pulley problems. You know how down was the positive direction on the left mass? And then we have to consider up as the positive direction on the right hand mass, as this is the direction each will move. Now, this is due to considering a pulley, where going up on one side and down on the other, well, is just how a pulley works. Well, the difficulty is that considering positive to be down on the left and up on the right gets a bit confusing when you try and combine them as an entire system. Which should be positive and which should be negative? Well, we can simplify this by drawing our free body diagram as if we kind of flattened out the rope. So we consider left to be positive in this case and right to be negative. And it's all consistent. Same forces involved, FG1 and FG2, pulling in opposite directions, just like on the pulley. Therefore, we simply have an easier way to consider this same situation. It's totally consistent with the real situation. Our equations would be F net equals MA. Again, we'll show the M as M1 plus M2 to remind us that we're considering the entire system for this equation. FG1 positive because it's going to the left. 
and FG2 would be negative because it's pulling to the right. And that's equal to our M1 plus M2, the total mass, times the acceleration. But now we know enough that we can rearrange and solve for A. And now that we have the acceleration of the system, we can solve for the rope tension, T, using either one of the other free body diagrams. So let's try it using the 100 kilogram free body diagram. We already know that FG1 minus T equals M1A. So let's just rearrange for T and plug in our acceleration. Again, all the items in the system move together and accelerate at the same rate. And we can solve for T. And we could stop there, but let's verify our answer by considering the mass 2 free body diagram. Again, by Newton's third law, the tension T on the 50 kilogram mass had better be equal and opposite to the tension on the 100 kilogram mass. So let's confirm. Now in this one we had T minus FG2 equals M2A. So let's again rearrange for T and plug in our acceleration. Again, all the items in this system move together, so the acceleration is the same, and we solve for T. Now, always allowing for a little bit of rounding, we're able to confirm that yes, indeed, our T is correct. In this tutorial, we considered connected objects again, but this time the systems were connected by a rope, which was hanging over a pulley. Again, we had three free body diagrams to consider one for each mass, and then one for the entire system. Again, the connection, in this case a rope, causes an equal and opposite force on each of the objects. All of this is fairly common to any connected objects problem. The unique challenge that comes with a pulley problem is that the directions are a little more difficult to keep straight. And this is easily resolved by flattening out the problem to be a left and right type of problem, so it becomes easy to define our positive and negative.